previously on Sons of Anarchy. I wouldn't even think it would be possible to like I know. keep that in proper inside of like, your. I know your intestines, intestines are like a rope, but not like, like that, that had to go the whole time. That's crazy. How long did that take? No I idea. If it's possible to floss yourself from from oh. from stem to stern <laughs> <laughs> oh, for the YouTube motions of like one hand up here, one hand back here. Oh, that's awful. That brings a whole new meaning to the dance. The floss. floss. I'm flossing. <laughs> Dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello, and welcome to The Village Idiom. We are a podcast that once a week takes a very shallow dive into an English idiom. We're going to talk about its usage. We're going to talk about its origins, but it's really just an excuse to uh, talk about something and be entertaining or not, or a rabbit trail or not. Shallow dives. Shallow uh, dives. Do you enjoy uh, a good swimming pool? Not, yeah, I like to dive, but I don't like shallow dive. You can't. You, can, you, no, you can't. This is actually dive. a bad example. Nobody likes a shallow. No dive. one likes a shallow dive. True story. I was in Mexico with my uh, brother-in-law, and we were at these these uh, the little pools off of a waterfall. It was amazing. There was like a little resort thing set up there, so that it was uh, like you know come and have your you know some drinks and and you know watch the waterfall and. You can go up. There's a sign that says, um, like, that it's okay to, okay to jump. Okay to jump. Cliff jump or whatever. Okay, okay to jump. And so my brother-in-law says, is asks the person, he's, he's speaking English. The guy's Spanish but has some English. Is it okay to dive? And the guy says, yes. Mm-hmm. See. See. See, it's okay to dive. So, but no, it's not okay no. to dive. It should have been no. Really? So jump so he was ending? saying c as in uh he was the the mexican man there was maybe he was just saying yes. let's see and he's walking to the edge to look <laughs> see no so he was meaning yes to jump my brother-in-law was meaning yes to dive right with different ends of the body <laughs> yes i'm aware <laughs> and so brother-in-law dives in and doesn't come back up and so and then he's gone Finish this story. And Please tell me bubbling. there's a happy ending. <laughs> he's bu- I'll, I'll get there. He's bubbling in the water, shallow dive. He comes to the top of the water, floats up, like full out floating, like just like, uh, like ghosty floating not, in the like water. Like not moving. And then <laughs> sucked back down by the waterfall. What? And so I'm like, I'm standing at the top, like it's my turn next. This isn't a joke. No, right? this is reality. This, this really happened. Uh, before, before children on a vacation with my brother and sister-in-law. And... I'm like, if he comes up again, I'm just going to jump in after him in the general area that his body is. Right. And we just hope for the best. Well, sure enough, his body comes back up to the top. I jump in. And as How soon big as, of a jump is this? Like, are we talking like it's 10 a, feet, 20 feet, 30 it, it, feet? It's it may, in that 20 foot range. Okay. As soon as I jump in, feet in the water, boom, my feet are like on the ground. Oh, like, no. It was like five and a half feet tall, like depth of the water. So he went in and did a full, <laughs> broke his neck. No. Half float. He was paralyzed. We, we got him out of the water. There happened to be, there, this is the remote middle of nowhere. There happened to be a paramedic who was also visiting just like us, uh, a, a doctor. Oh my goodness. A nurse that all happened to, to be there. So we fished his, his, his carcass out of the water. He was <gasps> able to breathe. And then we had to ambulance him back out through this remote road and then get air vacked back to Vancouver, broke his neck. He was in a halo for a year. True okay, story. So he's alive and so well. He lived to tell the tale, but shallow dives aren't always great. Welcome to the Village Idiom, where we take a deep, deep dive into an English <laughs> idiom. Man, that's terrible. Yeah, crazy, right? That's a shallow dive for you. Wow. And so we do shallow dives. We do. That is our MO. My name is Jurassic Mark, and this idiom beside me <laughs> is skinny. And uh, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play a clip. Get us into today's idiom, Bring and then the mood we'll up. see where. Bring the mood up. I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, here's a 2018. We're really modern today. 2018 animated movie. See if you can guess what this clip is from before Skinny does. Okay. I'm gonna just click on the right button though. You got it. He does it with passion, commitment, <laughs> and the help of his able-bodied assistant. Up and out, amigo. Time to ring the gong. Me. Yes. I guess you could say I'm learning the ropes. I guess you could say I'm learning the ropes, and that's today's idiom. Learning the ropes. Learning learning the I got ropes. nothing for you. I don't you know where that's recognize from. That? No, there was even a, a character name. Up and out, amigo. Amigo, not amigo. Okay, because that. 
<laughs> see. <laughs> no. Oh no! This uh, this is a uh, Migo. Hmm. Is it Japanese? No. This is Smallfoot. Oh, that's I haven't a, seen that. Oh no. Yeah. No. No, I'm an Tried adult. <laughs> Doesn't stop me. <laughs> so yeah, today's idiom is learning the ropes. It's fun learning new stuff. It is fun learning new stuff. I'm an advocate of doing new but, things. But that sounds more fun than learning the ropes is, to me, is like a job. Like, oh, I got to learn this. Go on. Ner- uh, more nervous. Learning the ropes is a nervous thing to me. Hmm. You got to learn the ropes. Uh, I, I can do it. I can. Uh, I'll get there. I promise. Because <laughs> it just seems to have more gravity if it goes wrong? Yeah, I don't know. Like, let's try something new. Yeah, totally. Okay, it's two weeks of uh, on-the-job training uh, until you learn the ropes. Oh, so you would say learning the, the, the ropes is related to, like, a job and ed- that part of yes. formal... So there's consequences. Right. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Totally, okay, totally. That, that totally. makes sense. So it's yeah. not just learning something new, but consequentially. Yeah. Here's a, here's a... If you don't learn said ropes, it's not going well. This is... <laughs> I can't believe I didn't think of this before right in this moment, but thinking of ropes. This I had a, fresh. I had a... Uh, oh, that's the wrong word for the story I'm about to tell. Mm. Uh, I had a Cocker Spaniel growing up. Okay. And it was mostly my responsibility. <laughs> and uh, I'm out in the backyard walking the dog one time. And, you know, if anybody's walked the dog, uh, you know, they're going to leave their mess behind. And so I had it down to a little art. Forget the bag. Forget the whatever. I would just walk around with a shovel. It's just our backyard, right? We're not out. Yeah, you walk around with a shovel. Yeah. Walk around with a shovel. And as soon as Who he went into that? dog squat, boom, shovel under the back end. So it just went right under the shovel and into the pile, right? But this one time, he's like, squat, walk some more. Squat, walk some more. And I'm like, he's in pain. Like. Something bad is happening. Squat, uh-huh. walk some more. And nothing's coming. And then it starts to come out. <laughs> and, it, and it keeps coming out. And it keeps coming out. And I'm like, oh, no. And he's squat, drag, squat. And he's looking at me like <laughs> terror. Like, squat, whoa, looking back at himself. And I'm like, there's a snake coming out of his rear end, right? So I finally get up to him because this thing is hanging out of his butt like two feet onto the ground. Like a tapeworm? So I put my foot onto it and he pulls out. Four feet of a rope. Oh, an actual rope. An actual rope. He had swallowed four feet of rope. That is in its own accomplishment. Right? Talking about learning Working new things. Working through. <laughs> so I had to learn the ropes. But when you said, <laughs> oh, this is fresh. Yes, it was. <laughs> but man, I just fell for the poor thing. Four that feet of rope going through. That is a rope you do not want to learn. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, there's my rope story. Anyway. Happy ending. Ah! Uh, having a... Uh, I wouldn't even think it would be possible to like I keep that in proper inside of like, your. Like I know your intestines, intestines are like a rope, but not like, like that, that had to go the whole time. That's crazy. How long did that take? No I idea. If it's possible to floss yourself from from oh. from stem to stern. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for the YouTube motions of like one hand up here, one hand back here. Oh, that's awful. That brings a whole new meaning to the dance, the floss. The floss. I'm flossing. <laughs> It's a rope. <laughs> oh, me and my friends are flossing. Some. Oh, it's terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible. So uh, learning the ropes, it does mean to learn how to do something particular, like a job, a task, or whatever. Uh, correct usage might be, well, we said starting at a new job, your, sure. your manager might say, hey, Skinny, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, it's going to say in training on your employee name tag while you're learning the ropes. Yeah. So I've- it's... Right, you're a, you're developing new skills. That someone would know that you're not quite proficient at it. Yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You learn the ropes. Uh, you can also say, "I've heard learn the ropes, show the ropes, teach the ropes, anything like that." It's about developing skills. Have you ever been tied up? <laughs> <laughs> ever? Sure. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I was. Uh... It's not about you. It's about me. It's, it's the lead of when someone asks you a question that's a, a bit obscure like Have that. Have you? Well, thank you. That's Thank you for asking. Uh, y- y- the most, uh, on my stag, I was handcuffed and tied to a pole outside of a community center. Oh, man. Yeah. And that was terrible. And then I was beaten with a bag of flour. <laughs> good story. Because I got good friends. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Some people take you to dinner. Well, you're tied up to a pole. To be beaten with a bag of flour? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's my good friends. That's learning the ropes of what? Marriage or just how crappy your friends are? <laughs> it was That was the day I learned I needed new friends. Definitely. <laughs> On the job training. Outside of a community center with people. Hey, do you know so what? being tied up. 
is, is, is awful. That part of ropes. I, I, yeah, I don't. I can't think of. I can't think of a bad experience when I was tied up. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Uh, no, I actually can't think of being tied up other than like for a skit or a play or something like that. But, mm. I, but no, I didn't have a bachelor uh, uh, party, so hmm. don't plan anything. <laughs> it's it's long gone. It's, long it's not happening. It's over. <laughs> you had hey, your chance. Uh, do you know why Jack Tripper? Uh, didn't push too hard with his landlords. <laughs> he was still learning the ropers. Nice. Is that your for today? <laughs> That's my cheater joke. I've got one coming up. We always challenge each other. If you're listening for the first time, Skinny and I challenge each other to bring an original joke. That was that was bonus right there. Bonus. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into this. Uh, if you don't mind, we're going to start things off. I said some words. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? No one can know. I turned around and looked behind. Those words came from another mind. Origins. <laughs> I get better at it. Air Guitar Nation. All right. Well, here we go. What uh, do we know about the origins? We of, know of this. The the, the, I'm going to go with the most obvious that comes up the most. If you get on the uh, internet and look up sources, most sources say that this expression has its uh, origins in the world of nautical, like mm. ropes and knot tying and yes. uh, sailors would need to know how to tie notes and secure rigging, all that kind of stuff, especially on larger ships. And so it, uh, the most common reference is that it comes from sailors having to learn the ropes. So there's just some massive responsibility to be a sailor. Right. I, I saw uh, an article in, in the, in the etymology of the word uh, that, it would be written of someone that uh, he knows the ropes was written on a seaman's discharge meant that he was inexperienced and only familiar with a, sh- a ship's principal ropes. Oh, so it was a, uh, it was a lesser thing. It was a lesser thing. So if you only, if you only learned the ropes, it just wasn't enough. Right. This, the, 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 when the sailor was, was, was out, it's just, he knows the ropes. So that's the etymology was, of the phrase yes. of the idiom. Yes, that, that's that's one of the things I read. But I know that there's more to the origins. Yeah, funny enough. Well, you know what? Here, here I'm going to give you another audio clip while we're talking about nautical and ships. But this is uh, this one might be on a ship, but don't let that fool you because it could also be a futuristic ship. Tell me if you recognize this. Uh, or not, because there we go. Space fleet never turns its back on those who need our help. Johnny, set a course for Skillane 4. Aye, aye, sir. We'll send a search party. Packard, Alaska. Actually, Good. Captain, I was thinking... It's a little longer than I planned. Take me it along. backtracked a little bit. A science officer. I need to learn the ropes. Hmm. You recognize that? No, but I, I am so full on my science fiction, and it had Star Wars music, but it was not. Is it? Is it that, uh, what's his face one? Give it to me. The, this the guy who did Stewie. Oh, no, 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 no. This is, uh, this is a, a great, great episode of Black Mirror. Oh, I have I, I, I have seen a couple episodes. Oh, you haven't it. gone through no, that? but I haven't worked oh, my way okay. through it. Okay, it's a... Uh, it's, uh, it too long to explain, but it's kind of got this Star Trekky kind of feel, and and I thought it would be a nice uh, for those Black Mirror fans out there. It'd be a good one. My to friend go had to. asked me if I wanted to go be involved in sailing, um, but he didn't rope me into it. <laughs> yeah, that's not mine. That's my that's my that's my second that's my secondary. <laughs> that's your bonus. Your bonus. That's, a, that's a little bonus. That's to warm you up. Okay, so yeah, most most uh, cleanse the palate. Most common reference is that it comes from nautical. Uh, another big one actually is that the story behind this uh, idiom could come from the world of theater. Hmm. So if you've ever seen any of those classic movies where some dope in the back pulls the wrong rope and the right. giant moon falls from the ceiling right, and, the and screen falls kills down. somebody, yeah. yeah, it's like you got to learn the ropes because, and it's actually fairly believable, especially hmm. back in old theater days maybe even new but what when, when everything was just manual like no electronics and right. no 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 gears it's just like pull this rope don't pull that rope do this rope for that and that rope for this so uh, a fair amount of people believe it came from theater references like you got to learn That's a good one. Yeah, you got to learn the ropes. Um I had um I I know that people probably already assume that i i was in the cool kid circle in high school is that what they assume but just to just to prove that 
when I was in the musical Oklahoma in grade 12, <laughs> no joke, me and my best friend, he was the lead and I played the villain named Judd. Okay. But we had an expert rope guy come in. Fun. And uh, and taught us how to like legit use ropes because Oklahoma's a Western mm-hmm. thing. Like learned how to lasso like... You know, the, when they spin yeah. in the actual circle, yeah. learn how to do that. And That's fun, actually. Yeah, it was pretty great. I was a Boy Scout leader. Yeah. And so uh, we went through Were several... Were you a Boy Scout or just I wasn't a Boy jumped Scout. right to leader? No, I just went right to leader because that's how I you roll. Over They looked at me and they said, you, you know what? You don't need to learn how to do any of it. <laughs> you can lead them. It's just like, oh, he's a he's an adult. <laughs> he's volunteering, so sure, we'll take him. And so we, we taught kids how to do uh, rope work and different types rope of knots. Rope courses and... Oh, like not tying not it. Not tying. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a big thing. Was, yeah. Uh, learning you could earn a badge for that, right? you could earn badges yeah. doing that. And so, um, you know, probably wouldn't be able to make many now, but it was a thing where you could do like uh, half a dozen, 10 different styles of not. So were you like learning as you, or did you actually get good at it? Because you're leading these kids. Like you knew how to tie such and such a rope oh, so or not. The at, at the 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 time why I was so into it is my dad was a Boy Scout and then uh, and throughout he had so many. Wait, great... you were a leader and your dad was a scout. Yeah, there's <laughs> not, not not in the same time. But, okay, but but yes, and so uh, my dad was fantastic doing all that rope right. stuff and he uh, also is uh, a fisherman so he's got all oh, sorts of yeah, fun yeah. knots. So he's on boats. This and... one works in best in water conditions and then this one doesn't work in in best in dry and if you're trying to connect two types of ropes together then you got to use a I, a sheet bend or is some, that, yeah. a clover hitch or I can't something. tie I mean I can tie a knot but like when I'm just trying to hang something from the ceiling and it's yeah. like there's no knot or like trying to make my tent stay up when we're camping there's no knot i know how to tie that is foolproof or it's so tight i can <laughs> never undo it it's again. a one-time use only knot yes. surprise i, 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 I could tie my shoes so like uh whether it was the the clove hitch or a bowline or a square knot i came across an interesting one the jack catch knot Okay. Which you have seen before because it's more familiar. Jack Catch, did you say? Catch. Catch. Yeah. yeah the, it's uh, the noose or the hangman's knot. Okay. And so the one that's coiled around 13 times to, yeah. So that Is it when, literally like the number 13, it's that many times? Yes. So really? The, the, so the proper one, is the, the proper hangman's knot is supposed to have 13, but often they'll just use six to eight because it's, it's way overkill. Is, thir- in, in terms is that of, why 13 is an unlucky number? It's part of the, the, they use 13 because it was bad luck. And so whatever you had done that required sentencing, that it was also just one more whammy on you. Wow. Yeah. So that so was, interesting. was the, the hangman's. The hangman's noose is actually hangman's called noose. the Jack Catch. The Jack Catch, like as in ketchup. But Jack oh, Ketch. Like K-E-T-C-H? K-E-T-C-H. Jack Ketch. That's like, a word? Ketch? The, the Jack Ketch. I believe it was his name. Oh, it's his last name. Jack Ketch. Oh, not. got it. Yeah. Yeah, Jack so anyways, Ketch. that's uh, at least interesting. Uh, did, he, did, what, did he die by his own invention? <laughs> no, but... Because then you could string Jack the, Ketch up. <laughs> that's the wrong direction for <laughs> this particular knot. <laughs> well, the, and in terms... When you talk about uh, people passing, that... The hanging, passing a rope, my dog. You mean hanging, when he passed the rope? <laughs> hanging is number two. Way when people feel it was number two. That rope was of, number two. Come to the end of the rope. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you're referring to your dog being being hung by that rope was is a particularly crappy way to go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that uh, the hangman's noose from the that noose, the second most popular way that someone um, sends themselves into eternity. Second. I'm like, trying not to use the word suicide, but yeah. Well, good. Good job. Yeah. So uh, you didn't use it. That's the then, second but. most popular, like today in modern times. Yes. Is hanging. Interesting. Hanging. Overdose. Number one, hanging. Number two, cutting wow. number three and firearm. Number four. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Jack catch is still doing its thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not a nice. It's like, it's, a, it's alive and well, but it's, it's the, the hanging is the second most popular way, which I thought wow, was, that's, that's sad. It is that, yeah. But the so they, of all the knots, you, that would probably be one of the most famous. Just I'd not heard that it was the jack catch. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told you my story about being in Oklahoma learning how to lasso uh, when we were referencing that it might come from theater origins. Mm-hmm. Funny enough, a much less popular but another possible origin is that the phrase comes from nomads that did rope tricks and traveled through the country making a living doing lassos and rodeo probably the beginning of rodeo days doing rope trips and so you you'd learn the ropes 
to make a living. Sure. Probably most used rope work that way now that the average person would see is a magician. Oh, yeah. Because they will do like rope Some of the tricks. Most ba- that's where you start when you get like the you kids. Start trick. On, you yeah, start on. You learning, start learning rope learning tricks. Learning the ropes. Right. Interesting. And so in terms of uh, in that acting world and using it as a, a form of entertainment, um, yeah, rope work is one of the, f- the first things you learn in, yeah, in, in, totally. in Magic Land. But th- there's been a number of, of deaths related to... Magicians' rope tricks? Magicians' ro- rope tricks gone wrong. It's no like way. When you rope tricked, you're like inside of like a container filled with water. Oh, and then you, they're tied you can't up. untie yourself. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, there's been a couple of deaths. There was one just last November of a magician in Spain that was doing a water rope trick that went bad. He didn't end up dying, but close call. Yeah. But it's, it's as part of the thing he said, you know, after his body went limp and lifeless, we weren't sure whether it was part of the performance or not. I see. That's always <laughs> You're like, is this theatrical yeah, buildup or is, uh, does he really need my help right now? Well, like, David yeah, Blaine's done this, right? Yeah. Like, do we, do we wake him? Do we stop? Yeah. I, ah, yeah. So the, but in terms of like common rope work, that would probably uh, be be the most used. Yeah, is it with in Magic Land? Well, here's something interesting. We we usually talk about the first time that the idiom we're referring to shows up in print or whatever. But in this case, this is kind of interesting because the first known use of the expression in print is a figurative one. Uh, so there's no actual rope being referred to, and it comes in James Skeen's travel memoir, Italian Journey, in 1802, and it says, I am a stranger, and I beg you to show me how I ought to proceed. You know the ropes and can give me good advice. It has nothing to do with rope. What's interesting about that is um, uh, knowing the ropes um, clearly, or most people think, comes from nautical, but the the origins, the most first time it was referred to as nautical was not in ref. I don't know how to say this. The idiom expression is in print earlier than anything in print that actually is a nautical reference to ropes. Hmm. Okay. So it's just probably not related to that then. Right. Well, it's in hard terms to of say. Origins. It's hard to say because we'll like, did it come from nautical? Because the first reference to it is, uh, is the idiom itself not the actual nautical reference that's crazy let's come back let's take a break sure i don't know if you guys have been enjoying listening to this podcast but did you know that while you're listening you can actually get paid to listen to this that's really cool we've been using the app podcoin it's available on iphone uh, android it's free and easy to use yeah and uh it's awesome because it turns your podcast listening into free stuff like a gift card from amazon or a starbucks gift card or if you're not self-absorbed, you can also uh, use it for charity. You're staring right at me. <laughs> <laughs> you can use it for charity uh, to buy like uh, rice for the hungry or blankets for the homeless or clean water. So the oh. pod coins can be used for all sorts of things. Or a Starbucks gift card. There you go. It's a good thing. That you could also give to one of those people. Download the PodCoin app and use invite code the Village Idiom. That's uh, Village Idiom, my, uh, my bad. One word with the capital V and a capital I. And you'll get 300 pod coin just for signing up. That's 300 pod coins just for signing up if you use the code Village Idiom. So I just thought that was interesting that in print, the the idiom is used before the actual rope reference. Seems backwards to me. In terms of professions and rope work, we know we're talking about magicians, but did you hear about the hangman's apprentice who died learning the ropes? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was half listening. Did you notice? I'm like, no, tell me. And then I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> that's terrible. You can't put a round neck in a square knot, apparently. So is that your joke? That was my joke. Oh, that's nice. The I like hangman's that apprentice who died learning the ropes. That's awful. Yeah. What if the, I think, uh, I think it'd be great if this idiom actually came from wrestling. Like, like big... <laughs> WWE wrestling. Like, you got to learn the ropes if you want to use them. You got to learn the ropes before you do a diving crossbody. Do some rope work. You got to learn the ropes off if the top you do rope. a mushroom stomp off the turnbuckle. That's awesome. <laughs> so, on that note, the reason I thought of that Listen, is, brother. <laughs> yeah. Gotta eat. Say I, your prayers and eat your vitamins. I came across a TV show that was produced in Canada in 1989 called Learning the Ropes. And it's, uh, I don't know if you'll recognize the name. You'd recognize the guy if I showed you a picture. Sure. But Lyle Alzado, Mm-mm. do you recognize that mm-hmm. name? Mm-hmm. Okay, so big NFL football player guy that turned actor. 
And so he plays a private school teacher by day, a professional wrestler by night. That's funny. That is, and it's called Learning the Ropes. And it's classic, like, dad with his kids and whatever. But one of the funny things, only went for one season, it looks like. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but tons of, like, cameos by real, like, pro, actual wrestlers. Pro wrestlers. But That's the, fun. The thing, I, when I was looking it up on the YouTubes, the thing that I thought was brilliant on their part, kind of ahead of their their time, was before each episode, they would interview, like, not not actors. They'd go on the street as like, what have you heard about the Masked Maniac? Which was his wrestling name in the show. And people are just like, oh, I, I don't know. It sounds terrible. And they'd, go, awesome. they'd go to someone else. What do you think about the Masked Maniac? I think he's fine. <laughs> and walk away like, I'm not going to badmouth someone. Like, And they were like, what is it? It's a wrestling. Oh, it's a wrestler. Oh, no, I don't know him. They would interview strangers. That's really And then cool. go into the theme song and into the show. The real life wrestler who I've seen I, when I was at the comic book, book convention a couple months back, uh, Jake the Snake was there. Oh. Yeah, Jake the Snake Roberts. I have met Jake the Snake. <laughs> I knew that. I, that was my lead yeah. in for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, I learned the ropes from him. <laughs> the, he he had a actually got to spend a fair amount of time with him. We did a show together and uh, That's like, awesome. told tons of hilarious and sad and scary stories of the yeah, world of wrestling. Jake like it's, Snake. It's, it's a it's a brutal oh, industry. Man. That's some good stuff. All right. Well, we did talk about uh, challenging each other with a joke, but um, do you remember this? Listen, listen to this. Okay. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you know it. What the Connie sauce is supposed to taste like? This stuff's made in New York City. New, New York, York City. City. Get a rope. Get a rope. <laughs> I'm like, that popped into my mind the other day. I'm like, I got to find that. That is just one of those commercials that is embedded in your brain. There was one of those, uh, like, uh, it was a really popular game called Cut the Rope. Oh, where, where uh, the little yeah. monsters and you had yeah, the, the yeah, thing yeah. was swinging. You got to get right. it right at the right time. That's right. Yeah, it had that, that Fruit Ninja-esque. Got to learn the ropes. Yeah. All right. Um, so here, here, one more thing I found super interesting, and, and we almost should have saved this for an episode closer to Christmas, because St. Nicholas can be roped into this idiom, <laughs> pun intended. Well. Uh, if you look up St. Nicholas, you'll discover that not only is he the patron saint of children, which everybody knows because, of course, he's the origins of Santa Claus, but he's also the patron saint of sailors. This is a real thing. Hmm. And then I started to think, in order to be the patron saint of sailors, one would assume that you would also must have sailed. So St. Nicholas must have been a sailor. And as it turns out, Nicholas found himself as a young man learning the ways of sailing as legend goes, uh, the captain he served truly gave him the grunt work on board the ship. Nicholas had to pull ropes from the side of the ship. He had to pull ropes from the sails after, uh, after a storm and sort them out. Most sailors learn how to tie knots, but Nicholas's first job was to detangle these wet ropes and remove any knots that he found in them. So he would pull all the ropes, first making this huge pile on one side of the ship, and then he would double check everything that he put together on the ropes and he'd look through and he'd make two piles. He'd make a pile of ropes that did in fact have knots and another pile of ropes that were still in good condition. They're still nice. And even though his system worked well, when he made his first pile of ropes, the sheer weight of the soaking ropes caused the ship to lean a little bit. So List, the ship yeah. Yeah, was listing to one side and passer buyers could totally see this listing ship to the starboard side. So Santa's once he list, that's where that, yeah. Once he put them into the two piles of the ship, it would write itself. So one day, another captain boarded the ship, observed Nicholas going through his routine. The visiting captain asked the residing captain what he was doing. And the captain replied, oh, that's Nicholas. He collects all the wet ropes and makes a pile. Watch him right now. He's making us list. He's checking it twice. And soon he'll find out which ropes are naughty or nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Touchdown. I made sure. Do you see? I wrote it down when you were halfway you through. You jumped the punchline. I line. wrote down the ending. I'm like, this yeah. is so good. Uh, sorry it was good so long. You. I had to go there. No, I liked it. It was it was fantastically full. <laughs> good job, buddy. Oh, oh, so I got good. list twice. Yeah, I was, I was I proud know. of myself. You were covering all angles there. Yeah, I know we're going long, but uh, we've got we got to get to our riddle link. Sure, we've got to sure. get to some shout outs, and I'm going to start. Our shout outs are a little different this time. Sure. So, uh, uh, one of our listeners, Tanya Barron, nice uh, sent. I love her. I don't know if you saw this already, mm. but sent us a link to something. Okay. She said these are visual riddle links. And so this is going to suck for listeners. So I'll make sure I'll post them on Instagram or Facebook Vitalinks. or both. But uh, so on uh, 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 I waste so much time.com. <laughs> so they had pictures like this. 
And uh, so as you can see, I'm going to give this one away for your listening. I'm holding up a picture where it's it's a face split in half. The top half e. is the face of E.T. The bottom half, do you know that face? No. That's Bruce Lee. So the answer is Bruce Lee T. Oh, it's literally nice. Riddlink, and there's tons of them. We've got oh, that's great. M and MC Hammer. <laughs> we've got uh, Ringo Starnold Schwarzenegger. Wow. And we've got Marilyn Monroe and Atkinson. These are great. <laughs> They're visual Riddlinks. So I'll post a few of those if oh, you're just listening. Good go find. to our Instagram account. Vince uh, will give you the the. The, the gist Those of, are great. Yeah, they're pretty Thank fun. Thank you, Tanya Barron, yeah, for that. Yeah, that. That, that was a nice bonus. Thank you for that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so make sure you drop some up on our Instagram, which can be found at the.village.idiom. Uh, when you search uh, in Instagram as well, you can uh, email us at thevillageidiompodcast at gmail.com. Or if you're looking uh, for us on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook, just search three minutes gone. Three, the, the number, number three. three minutes gone, all one word. And so all that'll, right. that'll get you uh, in contact with us. So Riddle Link is a two-part question that requires a two-part overlapping answer, and it goes a little something like this. Why don't you give me one first? Okay, I'm going to start you off with uh, something harder. Okay, sounds good. Huey Lewis says it's cool to be an equilater... <laughs> a quadru... A quad... <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. easy for you let to me, say. Let me start again. Huey Lewis says it's cool to be a quadrilateral bonder. Bonder. Uh, you brought her. <laughs> so hip to be square. Uh, bonder. Bonder. Yeah. Like glue, hook, tied up. Hip to be square knot. Hip to be square knot. Oh, there Good we go. Good job. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sparely quadrilateral is a funny <laughs> word to me. I'll lose my junk you on that. You got it out of your mouth. Yeah. Okay, here's yours. When you jump off a bridge using a rubber band and then skip with this exercise cord. Well, it's a bungee jump rope. That's right. Very bungee nice. Jumper. So that's how the game's played. Uh, give me one more and then we'll leave one for our listeners, our illegitimate children out there. That noose is misbehaving. Oh, man. Okay, so I'm going to go with the jack catch misbehaving am i right with jack catch you, you got two-thirds there's another word in there oh the jack catch naughty yeah <laughs> jack catch naughty jack catch naughty all right Good well job. we're gonna give you one more we're gonna leave it hanging and uh we want you guys to chime in tell us what you think try and answer this next riddle link uh using the the spots that skinny already gave you instagram facebook what have you and uh, so here's one just for you. Also known as the King, this Memphis-born wrestler is still honing his skills. Wow, that's good. You like it? I think I've got parts of it already. If you can solve the whole thing, make sure you reach out. I am Skinny. I am Jurassic Turnbuckle Mark. And these are the Village Idioms. Because nothing's gonna 